Welcome to the Story A Day podcast. This is Julie Duffy from storyaday.org, encouraging you to be a writer every day, not someday. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Julie here from the Story A Day podcast. If you are subscribed to my emails or follow along with my blog, you'll have heard me tell a story this week that I want to share here as well. So bear with me if you've already been on the the blog and read this story, but I will link to it as well in the the notes and you can see a picture that goes along with it. Last week I was in California and the really deserty part of California where they only get five inches of rain every year. And somewhat hilariously to me, when the Scottish girl turned up, it rained twice in the space of a week. Once it was just a little sprinkling. Um, Maybe this is normal for this time of year. I don't know, but it just struck me as amusing. But anyway, the, the second time it rained, it came in with a pretty impressive storm. We were crossing back towards the conference building where we were attending sessions. A friend of mine and I, she's from Australia, and we turned around and I I said, it smells like rain. And then we turned around and looked behind us and we could see what looked like clouds coming towards us and thought, oh yeah, there's the storm. But then everything went hazy and kind of like a yellowish haze. It wasn't like a normal rain cloud and we and we weren't wet and I realized as I opened my mouth to talk to her that I was getting sand in my mouth this was a sandstorm they call it a haboob and it looked like a storm but it felt completely different so just the idea of being somewhere with something so familiar and yet so different was really odd so of course like the idiot tourists that I that we were I'll, I'll speak for myself I stopped to take a picture of this thing and as we turned back round, the staff of the resort were all out like waving us in frantically, get inside, get inside, because it's going to bring down tree branches. And my Uber driver had told me about a previous storm the, the week before that had done that very thing. So I came back to my senses and I, I ran inside with, with my friend and the staff looked very relieved. We went back to our sessions and I sat there kind of like eating this grit and sand that I got in my mouth and sort of feeling in my hair to see if it was there too. And after the session had ended, we could, I was telling people who were indoors because they had no idea this was going on. And and then, you know, I was aware that rain had happened and we came back out after the session and I went to my, back to my room, which had a little outdoor patio outside it. So I sat out there in the, the protected area, watching the wet ground kind of steam and suddenly this peaceful resort where we were was not that peaceful anymore because what had happened is a, a huge tree had come down not far from my hotel room so at first when I was sitting out there everything was peaceful and normal and I realized that what I was looking at was a maintenance crew across the path standing around staring at vegetation and sort of muttering to each other and just assessing what was going on. And everything was still, everything had had gone from being noisy during the storm to being very quiet again. And as these people stood around and assessed the damage, everything was still very quiet and calm. Then another truck arrived with the chainsaws. Then another truck arrived with the wood chipper on the back of it. And then everything was noise and fury. Everything was action. And they were taking, they decided what to do. They knew what they had to do. They'd assessed the situation. The pause was over and now was time for action. And it struck me that there are times like this in life and in writing. I think in life, this moment in time is very much one of those moments. We are between two pandemic winters here in the the US and another winter that promises who knows what. Other countries have their own versions of upheaval going on, not knowing what's quite what's coming next. This is a, a little bit of a tumultuous time in our history and we've got this this kind of pause as we wait to see what happens next in Ukraine, in Italy, in the UK, in Ethiopia. So many, so many moments of 
of drama that seem to have paused to take a breath and we just don't know what's happening next. For us personally, that can be a distraction to creativity, uncertainty, stress. Some people thrive on that and their creativity comes out and, and they just they use that to channel and, and feed the stories they need to tell. Others require a little more safety, a little more comfort, a little more stability and sense that it's safe for us to be vulnerable and put our stories out there. And for those of us who are in that moment, who are assessing, where do I go from here? You know, life looks a bit different today than it did two years ago or four years ago or wherever you are in your journey. If you are in a moment where there has been a lot of sound and fury and there's likely to be another set of activity coming up, maybe you're in the pause and maybe the pause, the quiet time, the, the moment of taking things in and assessing is okay. Maybe it's necessary. Those guys with the chainsaws didn't just come in whacking around with chainsaws. They looked at where they should cut, where they should start, what tools they would need, what support they would need, and what they were, and they thought through what they were going to do with the branches and they brought in, you know, the wood chipper. There are times when we feel like we should be producing, producing, producing all the time. And especially in this moment in the writing world, in October, we're coming up to November and almost everybody you know will be talking about whether they are or aren't doing NaNoWriMo this year. And you will be envious if you're one of the people who is not writing a novel in November, you will have some envy and some FOMO and some sense that you are somehow failing as a writer because you are not churning out 1,667 words every day. But, and if you are, I absolutely cheer you on. I might do it myself. I still haven't decided because I'm, I'm like that last minute person. But for those of you who aren't or decide not to, or who stop partway through November. I want you to remember that sometimes it's absolutely appropriate to take that pause. If you are worried that not churning out new words means that you're not a writer, I would encourage you to remember the iWriter framework that I talk about here so much. Writing is not just writing. Writing is all kinds of layers of writing. It is imagining, imagining stories, imagining things in our world as parts of stories. It's imagining ourselves as writers. Then there's the writing layer of writing. Then there's the refine part of the I writer framework I talk about, where you take what you're doing and you make it better. You cut away the bits, you burn away the bits that are not essential and you refine what's working and keep those. There's the improvement part of writing. You know, just because you're not churning out new words doesn't mean that maybe you're, maybe you're rewriting a story. Maybe you're learning skills on how to write dialogue better. And then really important part of the, the writing life is to accept and celebrate, to triumph, to, to notice what you've done and to pat yourself on the back for that. I gave this, I, I outlined this framework, which I'll finish it in a moment. I just want to do a quick aside while I remember. I gave this framework to a new group of writers recently and I was watching the comments because it was virtual. So I was watching the comments a little bit as they scrolled past. And when I got to this idea of the T of iWriter, the idea that you have to celebrate every little triumph, these writers who are experienced and accomplished writers, so, so many of them leapt into the comments at that point to say, oh my goodness, I never stop to appreciate what I've done. I never allow myself to celebrate my triumphs. I'll do it for anyone else, but I never allow myself to feel triumphant. And I think 
we really need, as human beings, we need to give ourselves credit. We need to stop and look at everything that we've done. There's a technique that I learned from a business group where after every event, they will write a list. They call it their went well slash do differently list. So often we are focused on the do differently. We're focused on what doesn't work and what didn't go right or what didn't live up to our expectations that we forget so much went well. So I finished up a a critique week meeting this morning and I sat down and I I made a point of writing what went well. Sure, there's some stuff that I could do differently, but what went well, I want to hang on to those things as well. And I think we are socialized to not brag. So that translates somewhere during our life into not celebrating the things that are going well for us, not not congratulating ourselves on our achievements. And so that's why the T of the writer I writer code is in there, because it is incredibly important if you want to make progress in any area to take a moment and remind yourself that you're doing well. So another layer of the writing life, which it doesn't involve putting your fingers on the keyboard necessarily, is engaging with readers, with other writers, with the tradition that you come from. So if you're not writing, if you're in the pause, this engagement, this strengthening of your community, this looking at book reviews to see what readers love and don't love about books, that's engaging with with the potential readership for your stories. There's so many ways for us to enhance our writing life and our writing potential by looking at these different layers of the writing life that complement the actual words on the page part. And engagement, I think, is a big one. Whether you're engaging with other writers or whether you're engaging with readers or whether you're reading in your, in your reading the canon, whatever the canon is for your particular slice of, of literature and getting to know where you, your place in there is, these are important things that are worthwhile. And so while you may think you're in the pause, that you're not being productive, that you're not putting work out there, you actually can be working on things that when you come back to the page will reap rich, juicy fruits. And the final R of the writer code, of course, is repeat. You know, we have to see that these things are cyclical. Sometimes there is a pause. Sometimes you are taking in experiences and processing them or simply living to gather the materials to do the writing. Every time that you revise a piece, there's probably a process you go through. And it's important to understand that this repetition, although we're always doing novel work, it's right there in the name novel, we're always doing new work. There's certain things that repeat and certain things we can make our life easier by noticing that when they repeat, these things went well and these things didn't and this is the, these are the habits I should hang on to. So, If you are in the pause, you can use this iWriter framework or whatever other framework makes sense to you to remind yourself that if you are not turning out words, it doesn't mean you're not a writer. You might be doing the other parts of the work of being a writer. That said, if you are not ever writing, if you're not ever taking action to implement the things you've spent so long learning, I would encourage you to take a look at that and find a way to push yourself to actually write and finish things. That's one of the things that I love so much about NaNoWriMo. It's why I started Story A Day May, because there is a a huge benefit to implementing all the theory that we gather about writing. It's so safe to keep learning. It's so safe to just sit indoors and watch the watch the trees, but somebody has to get out there with a chainsaw and actually hack them back into shape if we want our world to really be safe. And I think that's what stories do for us. People who are gifted with the ability to take words and tell stories and take reality and mold it into something that makes sense to a larger group of people, I think we have a responsibility to use that gift. I don't think that writing is particular, writing success is particularly connected to talent, but I do think that there is something in that word gift. We have a gift, a facility 
for language. We have a gift at seeing how things in the world can make sense and how things in the world can be better. Stories make everything better. They create empathy. They make us connect to each other. We have a strong need for stories. And not always stories about deep, profound things. Sometimes we have a need for stories that make us laugh and remind us that we have stuff in common with people that we have never met because we can laugh together. We need stories that delight and uplift us. We need stories that have hope in them. We need stories that warn us about dangers. They can be all kinds of stories, but that is how we learn as a, as a species, is this storytelling that pulls us together. We need each other. We need your stories. And if you are in the pause, if you are gathering materials, if you are assessing what needs to be done and where you are, I just encourage you that if you are listening to this podcast, you're a writer and it's going to come back and you don't need to worry about that. If you can give it a little nudge and show up and be willing to put the words down, be willing for those words to be imperfect, whatever you need to do to do that, whether it is give yourself a time limit or sign up for story a week where I send you a writing prompt every week or take a postcard and write a story on the back of that so that you're constrained by size and then send it to a friend. Whatever you need to do to show up and just actually take action on your writing. I want to encourage you to think about doing that. But don't panic. Because sometimes the pause is exactly where you need to be. The urge to write will come back. And I want to urge you to stay alert for it. Because we need new stories. We need better stories. We need stories from the sensitive kids, the quiet kids, the people who watch and observe and take time in the pause to figure out what's going on, to discard knee-jerk reactions and ask with great childlike curiosity, what is going on? Why is that happening? Who should be doing that? These are not the voices that we hear raised in conversation all the time. These are the voices of the writers, the thinkers, the artists. I think you're one of them. And I think that your urge to write is coming back. If you're not there right now, it will come. And I want you to be alert because we need your stories. And we're waiting. Keep writing. Thanks for listening. Why not come over to the blog at storyaday.org and check out this week's writing prompts and articles. And in the meantime, have a great creative week. And of course, keep writing.